I will. All right, so let's continue with the next part of this lecture that we tentatively, tentatively call Marcus Garvey Revisited and Marcus Garvey the Negro John the Baptist, to say the black John the Baptist, where we use the word Negro to put it in context with the time, with the time in which Garvey cried or called in the wilderness and was prophetically and proverbially preparing the way. But now, our critique of our movement as Rastafari, generally speaking, and in particular, um, coming out from the, the Caribbean, and because there's, there's a schism that they like to divide and conquer us as we, the black people of the world, along different regional lines uh, in Africa, uh, along tribal lines, and certain other sort of differences. But the main message of Rastafari revelation is that we are the once lost but now found Beta Israel, those who are able to intuit the message, to enter into it, you understand, to enter, to receive it, and to enter into it, and the spirit, the spirit of Rastafari, enter into them. Now, there's something very interesting that I just read again recently. I think it was in the the speech book I, in one of the former videos I touched on the speech book where His Majesty speaks about um, he speaks about um, this this spirit being his child and, and and it's so important that I will beg your pardon for a moment the viewers of this video while I just locate that that book and just keep this rolling now what's on the dry erase board Marcus Garvey John the Baptist and Matthew chapter 11. Um, I'd like you to take this down, especially for the Dekam as Amorit, the, the disciples and the students, to take this down. Because keeping good notes is, is essential, as well as Matthew chapter 11, and we were in John, uh, St. John, John chapter 1. So we were in John chapter 1. In fact, we had left off in the significant verse here in John chapter 1 was John 1 and 21. 1 and 21. 1 and 21. So take this down, the, the disciples and the brothers and sisters who take the teachings of His Majesty seriously will take these, take these notes and, and keep good notes and, and study. Study to show yourself approved. But let me get the speech book of His Majesty and bring that forward to you. Well, brothers and sisters, that's my bad. That um, because there's there's so much, much, much to discuss, much to share, much to catch up on, and we have uh, a season, an opportunity, a season to catch up on it. Um, that particular little book. Reminds me of the parable of um, the parable of Yeshua, Yeshua, where it says that there was, I think it's the woman and the and the silver coins, that she has some silver coins and she looks all over, 
she looks all over for these silver coins. And when she finds these silver coins that she had lost, she, she rejoices. She calls her neighbors and her friends and everybody and says, come celebrate. Now, when you read the parable, if you read it from a secular point of view, you're like, she's like lost some money. She lost a couple of cents, you know, like, you know, a couple of coins, some dollars, silver coins. Christ mentions it as silver coins in his parable. But when she finds it, she rejoices over it. There's, there's an inner meaning. There's an inner meaning in that. And I believe that we have the uh, emeralds and the imeralds on our study page. And look for the silver coins, imero. We go into a little bit more detail on that particular parable. But this is the book right here. This is the book that we were speaking of, this particular uh, speech book, The Wise Mind of Emperor Haile Selassie, this particular book published by... Frontline Distribution International, um, very, a very, very good book, and and it has some of the the key um, the key um, utterances, a selected a selected set of utterances, and we're about to come out with um, the the speech, some of the selected speeches as well. The Lion Just Society is about to publish the. Um, certain of the selected speeches of his imperial majesty and, and we hope that the publishers or the printers and so forth will do us justice and provide us the, that particular book at a, an affordable um, at an affordable rate so that we can also provide that to you all who who don't have a copy of the selected speeches of his imperial majesty but this is a this is a wonderful pocket size book right here and this particular book, The Wise Mind of Emperor Haile Selassie I, under unity and brotherhood, under unity and brotherhood, and here we found this statement on page 91. And there's a series of, um, there's a series of selected um, utterances in this. That each one of them have, 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 have their own um, have their own purpose, you know, in our heads and in our hearts to help us to to realign ourselves with 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 the the central primordial sun of of of, of righteousness, and for that light, that illumination of the King of Kings and His Christ to shine within our hearts of. Our Godfather, Abba Kedus, Kedus Abba Tachi, in the name of Gia Tachi Nam and Anatachi Jesus Christos. Now, on page 91, we we're speaking about the Spirit. His Imperial Majesty says um, this, and this is this particular paragraph that begins on page 90. It says, um, So long as the Spirit of Africa prevails and stirs within us, so long as we continue to think and work and act within the African context which we have created, imbued by the African atmosphere which surrounds and pervades us, we are confident that the goals we seek shall be attained. And here's the key phrase right here. We have created this spirit. It is our child. We found that to be um, especially um, relevant to what we're to what we're seeking to get across here when we speak about um, the, the 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 spirit of Ethiopianism and 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 this this seed this seed that was planted within the diaspora and especially among the the Afro-Americans, of who Garvey had his greatest success. When Garvey also having the same kindred spirit came to America, unlike in Jamaica where there was a few who were, who were, who were, who were followers or, or loyal to his organization when it started out in 1914. Now, 1914 is a very significant year as well. Some say this is the year and in, in, in the time when, when the return of Christ. There's many 
who had preached and prophesied that Christ would return, the second coming of Christ would be around that time, 1914. 1914, and that's very interesting. Marcus Garvey established um, the UNIA in Jamaica in 1914, and then later on, I think around what was it, um, um, 19 was it 17 or or, or, uh, or or 1919 in America when he came forward to America, but it was first established in Jamaica. But when Garvey, having this spirit of 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 Africanness, and you have to remember that in this particular day and time, many black people, um, especially in the Caribbean, um, especially those who still were living in the same social conditions as slavery, basically, and and were cut off from some of the amenities and education and other things that this spirit that Garvey had of, of Africanness was not well received at first in Jamaica. But when Garvey came to America, especially being drawn by Booker T. Washington's, the works of Booker T. Washington, and reading the African-American Booker T. Washington's um, book up from slavery, his autobiography, Garvey says, Bam, boom, that's it. There it is. You understand? He he recognizes kindred spirit. But now what his Imperial Majesty is saying to us here is that this spirit of Africanness, this, this new spirit of Africanness is that which he, they, speaking of the Holy Trinity, speaking of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the one God had created, which we have created. And then he says here that we have created this spirit. This spirit, it is our child. This is why it's so important for us to be born again. And see, that was the unique message of the Christ, to be born again. It, it, it was this sonship, was this, was this adoption into the family of God, especially among the lost sheep, especially among the Beta Israel and the diaspora that was scattered to the four corners of the world due to our own and our ancestors' disobedience. And this is where Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 15 to 68 is, is very relevant and informative to us because it shows us now the scriptural um, verification of what happened to us over the 400 plus years. And, and that's, that's why that is so significant. So we want to get this verse right here and just make a note of it, that the spirit of Africanness, or more correctly, Ethiopianness, is the spirit that the returned Messiah, or the black Messiah, what Christians have called the second coming of Christ. Now, we were talking about this before in the other video that was a little bit controversial and, you know, many have differences of opinion on it where we spoke about the royal parchment scroll of black supremacy. And in the particular chapter that we had touch on, touched on, I think it was chapter uh, 17, was it chapter 17, speaking in tongues. And it talks about Professor Rogers, then it goes on to talk about Pastor Russell and Judge Rutherford. And when we came across these names, they sounded familiar to us. And we said, well, who is Pastor Russell and Judge Rutherford? And here in the Promise Key, I'm not the Promise Key, that's that's by Brother Leonard Percival Howell, Ganga Guru Mara, but this was the work that inspired Leonard Percival Howell's um, Promise Key. And this was written by Reverend Fitz Ballantyne Petersburg, um, another African-American brother from, 
from the the mainland. So those who would assume, because we've heard some idiots and ignoramuses, but you know we've we've said things in in, in hot anger and and out of ignorance before, and we ask um, that Jah and the one who we have offended um, to forgive us. Um, it says, forgive us our trespasses as we also forgive those who trespass against us. It's not just something, brothers and sisters, that we, we say, but it's something that we have to live and, and to do. We, we've touched on that in the earlier, another lesson, that it's, 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 it's about hearing the word, but it's also about doing, you understand? It's about doing doing what we have heard and what we are convicted and convinced and persuaded of in our hearts and in our minds is true and correct, is right and exact. So Pastor Russell and Judge Rutherford, this this is actually a, a, the information that we were able to find on this is a whole subject matter for a more um a more a more um, focused video on that in other words a video that's just devoted to that particular um subject matter we want to continue on the Marcus Garvey and John the Baptist the Negro John the Baptist theme because it's important that we understand what we're saying as Rastafari because when Anyone asks us, as it says in in Peter, when anyone asks us concerning this this hope that we have, we should be able to give answer, not just a fire bun, fire bun, you know, if somebody asks us a difficult question and we don't know it and we don't have humility in our heart to say, oh brother, sister, I, I don't know, but I would. I will, I will, I will get back to you on that. I will get forward, forward ever, backward never, um, on that. But you see, when we do that and we say we're Rastafari, we misrepresent His Majesty. And if we are Rastafari, if we are Rastafari, though we love the brother Marcus Garvey, let's not, don't get it twisted. We are not Garveyites. We're not Garveyites. Just like if we are followers of the Moshiach, Yehoshua, in the time of Yeshua or Christ, though we might have been followers of John the Baptist, once Christ has been revealed and proclaimed to us and we've accepted that as true, we don't have two masters. You understand? We now are following the one who was before, according to John's own um, witness in John chapter 1. Not the same John, but John the Baptist witness in John chapter 1, verse 21. But now, here's what the word says in First Peter. First Peter says to us, says to us, where shall we begin? It says, um, we'll begin from verse 8. Verse 8, First Peter chapter 3, verse 8, it says, finally, Finally, be ye, ye, ye means you all, not thee, but ye is all of y'all, speaking to all of us. Be ye all of one mind, of one mind, not divided, but are we of one mind concerning Garvey and, and, and the spirit of his majesty and the truth of his majesty? Loving the brother, but acknowledging the flaws, the shortcomings. You understand and praying and hoping that his, his majesty, that God in Christ has mercy on his soul. But loving and acknowledging that of men or Negroes born of women, there's none greater than Garvey, according to what Christ said of John the Baptist. I and I say concerning Garvey in relation to Ketamawi Hadassalasi. But because of the offense, he who is least in the kingdom is greater than he. Now, that's a teaching as well, but we're going to touch on that as well. Remember, this is based on the teaching of his majesty. Now, there's some who say, oh, this is what I and I is proclaiming is a false doctrine, a false gospel. We're speaking falsely because it contradicts what men and people might have passed on to them, this 
this elder or that elder. And there's some, there's some, many of these elders I and I have, have met and personally know, Yovas, and they have looked forward to I and I day. And if they say not, then they lie, or therefore they do not know the truth. You understand? They recognize that what was revealed in their time was not, was not full, but they still kept that message. They kept that word sound of Ja Rastafari, look to Ethiopia, look to Africa, behold his imperial majesty. But it's always been about learning the Amharic. It's always been about I discovered a version that's not the King James Version. Therefore, we discover the Metaf Caduce, the Book of the Seven Seals of His Imperial Majesty. So there's, there's growth for us. There is work for us. There's work to be done. There's preparation to be done. That's why it says to redeem the time. Why? Because the days are evil. But here in First Peter chapter 3, at verse 8, it says, Finally, be ye all of one mind, having compassion one of another, love as brethren. Be pitiful, be courteous, be courteous. So if uh, brethren or brethren, if you disagree with something, don't be discourteous. You understand? Don't, if you truly are Rastafari, you understand? If you really carry that name in grace, if you have a right to carry that name, hopefully it's not identity theft. You understand? That means you don't receive, you don't receive the name in and according to the teaching of His Majesty, but by wind and slight, the doctrine of men and people and what you heard and what you believe or what's in the reggae song, so forth and so on. Now, this does not say that we we're against reggae music or anything like that, but it's the teaching of his majesty, point blank. Not rendering evil for evil or railing for railing, but contrary wise blessing, barakat. A brother acts, I said, um, um, but his majesty went to um, lay a wreath on Marcus Garvey's uh, uh, grave in Jamaica. It, I guess the brethren on one's try to make a point like, well, how can you say this because his majesty laid a wreath on, his, uh, on the grave of Garvey, even after Garvey said what he had said and, and had in the latter, the latter part towards the time of losing his, his head um, um, parabolically according to what is concerning John the Baptist, our Negro John the Baptist, Marcus Messiah Garvey. So His Majesty practiced this and perfected it, not rendering evil for evil or railing for railing, but contrarywise blessing, barakat, knowing that ye are there to call, that ye should inherit a blessing, inherit a blessing, a barakat. This is more than just earning a paycheck. You see, inheriting a blessing vis-a-vis -vis a Rastafari revelation of Christ and his kingly character is, 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 more than, is, is, is more than any other kind of wealth, you understand? And it's our commonwealth if we truly be brethren, if he truly be I and I father, then we have one father then we have one master, we have one leader, and the teaching of his majesty trumps the philosophies and opinion of Marcus Messiah Garvey. This doesn't mean we shouldn't read it, we shouldn't study it, we shouldn't know, well, Garvey was correct there, Garvey was correct there. But we have to put our priorities in order. We have to put the Father's house in order. And in my father's house, there are many mansions, whether Bobo Shanti, whether Naya Bingi, whether 12 tribes, whether Orthodox, or what have you, or whether the society of his imperial majesty. Still, in our father's house, there are many mansions. And if it wasn't so, he would not have told us. So we accept that as true, and we move forward. For he that will love life, he that will love life 
and see good days. Let him refrain his tongue from evil. Now, those who are vexed with I and I for what I and I said, let's look at this. Did our tongue speak evil because we spoke the truth concerning what Garvey said about his majesty and brought that to the fullness of light? Or was that truth and y'all who are unduly vexed and allow an evil spirit and a murderous spirit and a violent spirit to enter into your Rastafari heart, are you refraining your tongue from evil? And his lips that they speak no guile. There's no guile. You're not making this up. This is the evidence. Is this evidence correct or is it false? Like we say, if it's false evidence, then prove this so. Rastafari will give you wherewithal to prove it if you trust him. If you trust him, that's between a father, that's the father and his child. So if you're a child of the father, then trust his ways. Because the wrath of man doesn't work the righteousness of Jah Rastafari. I know that for sure. It says, let him eschew evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it. For the eyes of Adonai, Jairastafari, are over the righteous, and his ears are open to their prayers. Pray on it, brothers and sisters. We're not forcing nobody to accept what our reasoning or preaching or teaching is. We're putting the evidence forward and showing you and then saying, check it out for yourself. Find the truth for yourself. But don't ignore it. Don't act like you know it and you didn't weigh it and you didn't check it out or you assume. But the face of Adonai, Jah, Rastafari, is against them that do kufu, that do evil. Whether they be Babylonians, or whether they be of I and I, especially of I and I. So overstand that. Verse 13, And who is he that will harm you if ye be followers of that which is good? Some don't want to speak this truth. They know it's true, but they don't want to speak about it because they're afraid of some minor people and some brethren or others who may be a little more fanatical in their philosophies and opinions concerning our brother, the Negro John the Baptist, Marcus Messiah Garvey. So be it. Verse 14, But, and if ye suffer for righteousness' sake, so if I and I have to suffer all the unkindness from some rasters because we put in the truth about Marcus Garvey in relation to his majesty out there. Happy, Asher, Asher Ha'ish, Miskuno, happy are ye. And be not afraid of their terror. Be not afraid of their terror or terrorism. Neither be troubled. Neither be troubled. But Sanctify, that means make holy, make yetekedase, make set apart, sanctify Adonai, Yah, Ja, Rastafari in your hearts. And be ready always to give an answer. This is the key. This is, what we, this is the point that we was getting to right here. We must be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope of the tesfa bamarinya tesfa the expectation the hope that is in you with meekness and fear with meekness and with reverence having a good conscience that whereas they speak evil of you, as evildoers, they may be ashamed that falsely accuse your good conversation in Christ, even Christ in his kingly character. 
For it is better if the will of Yah, if the will of Jah be so, that ye suffer, that I and I suffer for well-doing than for evil-doing. Jah, no. There's another little portion right here that we want to touch on. I mean, this is still in the, in the same chapter, 1 Peter chapter 3. We're at verse 18, the vicarious suffering of Christ preached by Christ through the spirit of Noah. It says, through the spirit of Noah in the Schofield Study Bible. Verse 18, for Christos, for HaMashiach, for the Mashiach, also hath one suffered for Chatiyat, has one suffered for the missing of the mark or sin. The just, the tzaddik, for the unjust, for the Amatenya, that he might bring us to Jah, that he might bring us to Elohim, that he might bring us to God, the spirit of truth, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened, but made alive, but made living by the spirit, by which also he went and preached to the spirits in prison. The spirits in prison. When I just talking about Babylon prison, it's all kind of prison. Some are in the prison of their own psychology or their own feeling, mixed up moods and attitudes. They're in prison. You understand? They, so, so we speak into these spirits in the prison, which sometimes were disobedient. Were sometimes disobedient. When once the long suffering of Elohim Baruch Hu, waited in the days of Noah, in the days of Noah, while the ark was a preparing, wherein few, that is, eight souls were saved by Wucha. Eight souls were saved by water. And it says, as the days of Noah were, so shall these days. Now, Garvey, he got in some trouble because of what? The Black Star Line, right? Boats. The Black Star Line. But what were the boats for? The boats were to return, to come out of Babylon. So you can see a link there in that spirit, quickened by the spirit, the true spirit of Ethiopianism, the true spirit of our kinsman redeemer, the true spirit of Christ in his kingly character. Verse 21, the like figure, the like figure, a figure of speech, where to even baptism, baptism, isn't this around the same subject matter, baptism, if we want to touch on, how is Marcus Garvey likened to John the Baptist? In what way? Is this a true likeness? that Marcus Garvey is John the Baptist. We briefly touched on the fact that, well, Messiah, that's what his mother wanted to name him, but his father, earthly father, he was into um, astrology, and he felt that a child born at that time, Marcus, would be a more appropriate name. So the mother and his mother and father, they kind of made a compromise where he would be named Marcus Messiah Garvey. But among those black people whom... He touched with his word and with his rhetoric and with his works. They called him the black or the Negro Moses. Rastafari, we now call him, many call him the black Moses. But remember, Moses did not lead the people into the promised land. And the reasons why all deal with Jah again. He, even Moses himself, he was disobedient. He, he allowed the pressures of men and people to make him disobe disobey what the Almighty told him to do concerning the rock and the what water. So instead of speaking to the rock and giving credit, giving that credit to Yahweh, what did him and his brother Aaron, Haron did? They said, do we have to always do this stuff for you? You know, kind of like murmuring, and then he hit the rock. The water came out. The people got water. The people, you know, they were, they were thirsty, you understand? And the water came forward, but not the way Yahweh had told, not the way Jah had told him. And Yahweh revealed to Moses that you will not 
enter into the promised land with this people, you will only see it from Mount Nebo. You will only see it almost like from afar. Isn't it ironic that it said that Garvey never made it to Africa? Think about it. You understand? And now think about the connection with Moses. Does this mean we don't love Moses because Moses fell short and Moses disobeyed and Moses did some things that caused him to have a divine censure or John the Baptist? No, this means that we're being truthful because we must learn from this. And this is the reason why we're on this message. We as Rastafari, we really need to grow up. You know what I'm saying? We need to grow up to him in all things concerning the king of kings. Now, to go through this, it says right here, the like figure where to even baptism doth also now save I and I. Baptism also now save I and I. And now notice what it says right here, First Peter chapter 3 at verse 21, because we need to understand the theme of baptism. Let us, um, let us emphasize this on, on the board right here. We need to understand this theme, this theme of baptism. Of, of, of baptism. Let's put baptism here. Hallelujah, because these are well, all things that we were meditating on once we heard about the controversy, even before we heard actually there was a controversy because of what we had um, taught and proclaimed from the Royal Parchment Scroll on Black of black supremacy concerning Marcus Messiah Garvey and, and his hard and false statements against the King of Kings, um, almost similar to the offense that Garvey took in Rastafari, the offense that he took in His Majesty, was is so similar, almost almost to the T, you understand, to the cross, to the T, as John the Baptist and Jesus Christ and Yehoshua. Ha Moshiach, black one and savior. But make a note of this baptism right here. Make a note of baptism. Because if we say that Marcus Messiah Garvey is the John the Baptist, it's not just of the Rastafari movement. No. He's not the John the Baptist of the Rastafari movement. Some Rastas may think so, but of we the black people or we the Negro people at that time because that was a step up from colored. You see, most blacks were still dealing with being called colored. The whole thing was the colored thing. So by calling myself a Negro, not nigger, but Negro was thought to be a step up. But throughout Garvey's writings, he often spoke about Ethiopia. He made reference to Ethiopia as a, as a, as, as a symbol. So we want to connect that now with a certain baptism, a certain baptism. So here it's interesting that the Spirit said to read on, because in verse 21 it says that the like figure, the figure, what figure means, a figure of speech, the like figure where unto even baptism doth now save us, save I and I. But notice what it says in the parenthesis, the parenthesis it says, not the putting away of the filth of the flesh. Not the putting away, not like ba bathing, bathing, bath baptizing, not baptizing in that sense of bathing, baptizing, baptizing. No. It says right here in the scripture, it says, not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the real baptism, not just the putting away, it's not just going in the physical water, but it's a spiritual, metaphysical aspect, but the answer of a good conscience, the answer of a good conscience, not to yourself, but to Jah. The answer of a good conscience towards God, towards Egeziyavihir Lotu Subhat, towards Elohim, Baruchu, bless be He. By the resurrection, by the resurrection, by way of the resurrection of Yeshua HaMoshiach, of Jesus Christos, Jesus Christ, who is gone into heaven and is on the right hand the right hand of Elohim, the right hand of God, angels and authorities 
and powers being made subject to him. Verse 22. Now, that right there reminds I and I of the fact that this is true with his majesty. That the same thing it says right here, that the angels and the authorities and powers were being made subject to him. But who betrayed him? It was the careless Ethiopians at home and abroad. Not just those at home in Ethiopia, but what about the Negroes who are calling themselves Ethiopians abroad? We were calling ourselves Ethiopians, black folks in the Americas and the Caribbean, since the 19, since the 19, um, what, the, 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 the teens and, and the 19 teens and the 20s and especially since the 30s. So what happened? What happened from like 4041 to 2011? If we go from 1941, Liberation Day, to 2011, what happened? How long is that? How long is that about? That's about 70 years. Isn't there a prophecy in Scripture concerning a period of time of 70 years? Garvey passed away. He died, or rather he went to sleep because he said to his followers and his faithful, I am not dead. I am asleep. And that's, that's a key, too. So we know the brother was a Christian in that, in that faith-based sense because when a Christian quote, dies, we don't say they die as Christians, as our brother or sister or other. We say that they went to sleep. You see what I'm saying? They went to sleep. Only those who don't know Jah die in that sense. I mean, they die a death because they die apart from the spirit that gives life. You understand? They die having turned away from the blameless creator, our black Lord and Savior. Now, let's go forward. Let's go forward with this. Um, sometimes I, I think I say, okay, I want to communicate that, but I, I know the brothers and sisters who need to receive it and who are able to receive it will receive it. Now, let's continue since that last verse right there brought us around to baptism. It brought up this theme of baptism. What is baptism? It's very interesting that right here in 1 Peter 3, chapter 3, verse 21, it, it, it qualifies how baptism saves us, not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, as in bathing or baptizing, but it's, a, it's the answer. It's an answer of a good conscience, that our conscience will be good. Not good in the way that I think is good or you by your standards or my personal standards, but by his standards of what he regards to be good. So we have to qualify. When we carry this name, there's a responsibility. This is not a style. This is not a, a fashion. Yes, it's, yes, it can be stylish. Rastafari can be stylish. Rastafari can be fashionable. The king of kings, he's the best dressed man three times in the world. Three times, you know what I mean? But, but what is that? He didn't brag about that. That's just one of the miscellaneous um, um, facts concerning the king of kings. Worldly people might glorify in it. But the king of kings didn't glory. That wasn't the main point to the king of kings. But the main point to the king of kings was, was, was justice and righteousness and, and, and truth and, and, and peace and, and fulfilling the will, you understand, the divine will. So baptizing, baptizing, baptizing. Now let's, let's touch on something where we were in, in 1 John. Let's go back to 1 John. We'll, come, we'll return to um, 1 Peter. First Peter chapter chapter three, but let's put this up here as well, next to baptism. First Peter three and twenty-one. Something going on with the numerology here. Eleven, 
one 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 two one three two one. Don't make a biggie out of it, but you know. But if the spirit should reveal something, then recognize the revelation. So, John the Baptist was asked in St. John chapter 1, verse 21, and they asked him, what then? Because in verse 20 it says, and he confessed and, and denied not, but confessed, I am not the Christos, I am not the Moshiach, I am not the Mashiach. I'm not the anointed one. And they asked him, what then? Art thou Elias, Eliu, or Elias? And he said, I am not. Art thou that prophet? That prophet? They must have knew which prophet they were speaking about. Do you know which prophet they were speaking about? That prophet? And he answered, no. Verse 22. Then said they to him, who art thou? You know, John the Baptist comes and said, I'm John the Baptist. You know what I'm saying? But they ask, well, who art thou? That we may give an answer. Uh-oh, we're back to giving an answer. See, see the theme, the spiritual theme in this is answer. You see how answers coming around again in verse 22 of First John, like it was in, um, I think, verse 22 or 21 and 22 of First Peter chapter 3. It says right here, it says, Then said they to him, Who art thou, that we may give an answer to them that sent us? What sayest thou of thyself? What do you say of yourself? You understand? What do you say of yourself? Verse eight of one crying in the wilderness, Make straight the way of Adonai, Jah, Rastafari, as said, the prophet Esaias. He says, I'm the one fulfilling what the other prophet before me, the prophet Esaias, has declared and has written and said. Verse 24, and they were Pharisees. So it was some, some ones and ones that were sent from the Pharisees, one of the, the main religious, you could say, the, the main political and religious denomination of the Negro Jews or the Negro Hebrews, because those Hebrews were Negroes. If you studied it, you'll recognize they act just like, just like black folks. That's how, that's how you know them. You, you, when you study this, you, you see the spirit. You see the, you see the essence. It, it comes alive. This dead letter in spirit now becomes living. It's a living word. And they asked him and said to him, Why baptizest thou then? If thou be not that Christ, nor Elias, neither that prophet. In other words, why are you baptizing? They said, well, well, well you know, why are you baptizing if, if, you, if, you, if, you, if you be not? If you be not that Christ, nor Elias, Elijah, neither that prophet, why are you baptizing folk? John, why are you doing this? Who are you? you, you you're not the Christ. You, you are not Elias, Elijah, neither that prophet. So they must mean another prophet instead of the prophet Esaias or the prophet Yeshayahu. Isaiah, because that's what, what John referred to um, when he says, make straight the way of the Lord. He was basically quoting from Isaiah. He was quoting from Isaiah concerning the dispensation, the dispensation at hand, and that's Isaiah roughly, I think, 40, Isaiah chapter 40, verse 3. Now, John answered them saying, I baptize with water. John, now he answers why I'm baptizing. He said, I baptize with water. But there standeth one among you whom ye know not. He says, but there's standing one among you who you're ignorant of. There's one standing among you who you don't know. There's one standing among you who you're ignorant of, who you know not, who you have no knowledge of. Right? And, of course, the Pharisees, and they, they, they thought they probably knew everything. You understand? But 
they didn't know what John was speaking about or who John was speaking about. John goes on in verse 27, he it is who coming after me is preferred before me, whose shoes latch it, I am not worthy to unloose. These things were done in Bet Abara beyond Jordanos where Johannes was baptizing. Then it says in verse 29, the next day, Johannes John, seeth Yeshua, Jesus, coming to him and saith, Behold, look and see the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Now, in Marcus Garvey's time, what was it? It was, Behold, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, his imperial majesty, Haile Selassie I, the elect of God, the king of kings of Ethiopia. He has prevailed to loose the seven seals and to open the book, even the book of life for I and I and I. This is he of whom I said, after me cometh a man which is preferred before me, for he was before me. Now, this whole idea and emphasis on before, before, before is interesting because once we learn the Amorik and we start to study the Metaf Kedus and, and, and the book of the seven, His Majesty's Bible, we begin to understand like words like Kedamawi, Kedamawi. If you understand Kedamawi and, Yesh and, 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 and Yeshua, um, this is, he's called the, 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 the Kedami. The Kedami, the Kedami, and in Judaism, there's a whole Kabbalistic teaching on the Kedmon, the Kedmon Adam, the Kedmon Adam. In other words, the Adam before Adam. There was Adam, but there was the Adam before Adam. In other words, the Adam that was made in the image and after likeness of God that was before Adam, that according to certain Kabbalistic Judaic teachings, he's known as the Kedmon or the Kedmon. The, the focus is on the idea of Kedama. Kedama means to be before. Kedami means the one, the forerunner, the forerunner. And in, the, in, 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 in Hebrews, it speaks this as well. well. We'll we'll touch on that. But the name Kedamawi, we translate or translate the meaning first, but it really means the one who goes before. You understand? The one who goes before. In other words, Haile Selassie's name is often translated as the first power of the Trinity. But more correctly, it's the, the, the power that goes before the Trinity. The power that goes before the Trinity. And, and, and that, there's something to be understood of that when you know how to count. You understand? Because the one God goes before the Trinity in that sense, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, which is still the one God, but in origination, you understand, in origination, in manifestation, in, in order, you understand, in preference, as John is saying here concerning Yeshua. So he goes on to say, and I knew him not. And I knew him not. So John admits that he did not know this one. He says, Behold the Lamb of God, but he's saying, And I knew him not, verse 31, but that he should be made manifest to Israel. That he will be made manifest to Israel. He didn't say he will be made manifest to the Romans, to the Gentiles, to the heathen, or to these people. This is why that message of Rastafari very uniquely was made manifest to the Africans and the lost sheep and the diaspora, you understand, know in the Americas and the Caribbean and, and throughout South and Central America as well, because that is Israel. Therefore am I come baptizing with water. He says, this is the reason why I'm coming baptizing with water. It's very interesting, because if you think about Marcus Garvey, the, the, the water theme 
is obviously there in the ships. And the whole idea of even Garvey had sailed to parts of 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 of, of uh, South America, Central America. He of course sailed to America. He went to England. Some say he might have gone to South Africa. Or at least the message of the UNIA went to South Africa. But the idea of water, the Black Star Liner. So we see this symbol, the symbol of water. And it says in verse 32, and Johannes John be a record saying, I saw the spirit, the ruach, the Memphis descending from heaven like a dove, and it abode upon him. Verse 33, 33, and I knew him not. Wait, wait, wait. You see how many times it's saying, and I don't know him. I, I knew him not. I knew him not. He said, there's one standing among you whom you don't know. Then he says, and I knew him not. And he repeats here again, and I knew him not. But he that sent me to baptize with water, the same said to me, the same, the one. So one had sent him, one had sent John the Baptist to baptize with water and also spoke concerning the one the Lamb of God who was standing in their midst, whom they didn't know, and whom he said, I knew him not as well. But the same said to me, upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending and remaining on him. You see, the Spirit can descend, but it may not remain. Look at the Old Testament. Look at, the old, look at Samson. Look at different ones in the Old Testament. Especially Samson is a good example with the dreadlocks and everything else. That's a good connection for us as Rastafari. You know, hopefully we can get it by having that particular figure as an example. That Samson, you know, he was a Nazarite, but he wasn't. He wasn't a strict so-called religionist in that sense, and you know he did a lot of things that were questionable of his Nazarite um, vow. But it often would say whenever he called upon Yahweh, that Yahweh would send the Spirit, and like the Spirit would 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 be upon him. You understand? Know the idea was the Spirit would descend upon him. Even David says in the Psalm, "Take not your Holy Spirit away from." Me. So the idea was that the Spirit would descend when needed upon certain chosen men as well as women you know, of faith. But here John says, upon whom that the same one said to him, upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending and remaining on him. So the Spirit wasn't just descending, you know, like, like somebody can get an inspiration, you know, a come and a go. But in this case... The, the Spirit revealed to John the Baptist that upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending and remaining on him. Bam. The same is he which baptized. The same is going to be he who's going to baptize with the Memphis Kedus, with the Ruach HaKodesh, according to the Ibrahist. In the Hebrew, the Ruach HaKodesh. The Holy Spirit, Bamarinya, the Memphis Kedus. In your Bibles, King James says Holy Ghost, but you can strike that ghost out, whether on the paper or just in your mind when you read it, because a ghost is a, a disembodied spirit of a dead person, tormented, earthbound, kind of a spirit of an earthbound dead person or something like that. So this is a little this is a major error of the translators there, but the Holy Spirit reveals that it, 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 it's no ghost. It's the Holy Spirit. And I saw and bear record, verse 34, that this is the Bain Ha Elohim. And I saw and bear record that this is the Son of God. Now, this is John the Baptist's testimony, right? This is John the Baptist's testimony. And then it goes on to now declare when the public ministry of Jesus Christus begins from verse 35 of John chapter 1. It says, again, the next day after John stood and the two of his disciples and looked upon Jesus or Yeshua or Jesus as he walked, he saith, Behold the Lamb of God. He, he said that he said that once before, right? So he, 
He's saying this more than one time. How many times did Marcus Garvey said, look to the east? I'm sure it was more than one time. And the two disciples heard him speak. They heard him speak and they followed Yeshua. They followed the Yeshus. Now notice what happens here. This is similar to what happened with the Marcus Garvey movement, and in particular with the UNIA. You understand, the UNIA, and even between the UNIA and the EWF, the Ethiopian World Federation, because His Majesty would send a special emissary to black America, and that special emissary is known as Dr. Malaku Emmanuel Bayan, Dr. Malaku E. Bayan. That was, and Malaku means his angel, just some food for thought right there. Prophecy says that when it's time for us to come out, that he will send his angel to go before our face and to do what? To prepare the way. Now, the next day it says that John, he stood and two of his disciples, and looking upon Jesus as he walked. So they were standing, and they looked and saw Yeshua as he was walking, right? And Yeshua as he walked, and he said, and John said, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. So these two disciples are standing there with their teacher, you understand, similar to those who were Garveyites with Marcus Garvey, such as, okay, let's point out two disciples of Marcus Messiah Garvey. Uh, Reverend James Morris Webb, that was the first proclaimer of look to Africa where a black man be crowned king. In him you will find the redeemer. Um, and Rabbi Arnold Ford or Arnold Josiah Ford, he is the one who is credited in the record with composing or writing the Ethiopian anthem. Now, some people dispute this because they heard people say over and over and over again that Marcus Garvey wrote it, so forth and so on. He did publish, but not everything that he published he authored, though, though Marcus Garvey did author many things, but the anthem was not one of them. Now, but there were these two disciples of John the Baptist who stood there. And as they stood, they saw Yeshua walking by, and John said, Behold the Lamb of God. And what does it tell us next? Verse 37, And the two disciples heard him speak, and they followed Yeshua, and they followed Jesus, and they followed the Yesus. So when the two disciples heard John speak, saying, Behold the Lamb of God, remember what preceded it the day before, right? They basically started to follow Yeshua. And, and, and now this is the same that happened with Marcus Garvey and the Marcus Garvey movement. That Marcus Garvey made this proclamation concerning Ethiopia and concerning look to the east and the coronation of a black king and the day of redemption being near. And what happens? Rastafari is crowned Kadamawi Haile Selassie upon the throne of David in the biblical land of Ethiopia. And there's prophecy, there's history connecting Ethiopia and the Bible and Ethiopia to I and I here in the diaspora and the lost sheep and the Beit Israel. And it started to all come together. And two of Garvey's disciples, namely um, Reverend James Morris Webb, as well as Rabbi Arnold Josiah Ford, they followed from that moment when they recognized who it was who was being spoken of, they went and they followed His Majesty. You see these two brothers right here? These are the two brothers right here. These are, this right here is uh, Reverend James Morris Webb, and this is Rabbi Arnold Josiah Ford. They formerly were Garveyites, members of the UNIA. Afterward, they would become Rastafari in spirit and in consciousness. They were not locksmen, you understand? It's about the head and the heart. Let's recognize the locks are a symbol. It's powerful, it's righteous, 
but it must be rooted and grounded in truth. And these brothers were rooted and grounded in truth. So what we have, even at another level, at a further level, is a confirmation and an answer and a teaching and a clarity of how Marcus Garvey is a Negro John the Baptist, a black John the Baptist, not just a Rastafari, not a prophet of Rastafari. See, many people believe that, but then you have to define prophet has a definition. It's not my definition. You understand? It's not your definition. It is John's definition. It's according to the glory of his majesty. We can say it's his imperial majesty's definition. It's the Bible's definition. It's our legacy, our history, the half of the story that hasn't been told that we need to start to learn ASAP again. So these two disciples... They followed Yeshua. Verse 38, then Yeshua turned and saw them following and said to them, what seek ye? What seek ye? He meant to follow Galatio. You know what are you seeking? They said to him, Rabbi, Rabbi, which is to, which is to say being interpreted master, Memhir, Memhir Hoi, Rabbi. Where dwellest thou? He said to them, come and see. It's interesting because in Revelation there's a lot of come and see, that same phraseology there. They came and saw where he dwelt and abode with him that day, for it was about the tenth, it was about the tenth hour. It was about the tenth hour. One of the two which heard John speak and follow him was Andreas, or Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first findeth his own brother Simeon, or Simon, and said to him, We have found the Messiah. We have found the Moshi, the Moshiach. Which is, according to the Bible, said, which is being interpreted the Christ. So when we say Moshiach, we are speaking of the Christ. When we are saying the Christ, Yeshua, we are speaking of the Moshiach. So the word Moshiach or Messiah is the Greek of the Hebrew, and Christos or Christ is the Greek Septuagint, the Koine interpretation. So it's almost like, like if I say the anointed, the anointed would be the English. If I say Bamarin Yetekebawin, Yetekeba, Yetekebawin, that's a way of interpreting the idea of anointed, but it's referring, it's another description of the same, the same noun, you understand, the same idea. And he brought him to Yeshua. So we have right here where Andreas, finding his own brother Simeon, said to him, we, because remember there were two of them, saying, we have found, we have, they took responsibility, they said, we have found the Messiah. Notice, John the Baptist didn't say, hey, the Messiah, John the Baptist was like, behold the Lamb of God, that's what he was saying, when he, whenever he saw him, behold the Lamb of God, who will take away the sins of the world, behold the Lamb of God. But he didn't say, behold the Messiah. But his disciples now said, we found him. We found Christ in his kingly character. It was the disciples of who? The disciples of John the Baptist, just like it was, we can say, the disciples of Marcus Garvey. You understand? So, so we don't forget Marcus Garvey. We don't forget Marcus Garvey. We didn't sell him for rice. We didn't stone him. I and our ancestors received him. You understand? As Afro-American, we received him. You understand? The movement grew, you understand, here. And it became that revelation or that part of the fulfillment of Jah's prophecy. Verse 42, and he brought him to Yeshua, and when Yeshua beheld him, he said, Thou art Simeon, the son of Jonah, Jonas, the son of the dove. Thou shalt be called Cephas, or, or Cephas, or some say Cephas, but Cephas, or uh, a, a type of a stone, which is, by interpretation, they tell you right here, a stone. The following day, 
Yeshua, Jesus, would go forth to Galilee or Galilee and find the Philippos and say if to him, after he found Philippos, he said, to cut to the link, he said, follow me. Follow me. Notice, Philippos is the same one who baptized the Ethiopian eunuch. I want you to make that, make that connection of Philippos and the Ethiopian eunuch. It's, it's, it's very important to make that link right there in what order the disciples were being called and coming forward. Now, Philippos was of Beit Saida, the city of Andreas and Petros. Philippos findeth Natanel. And saith to him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and the prophets did write. Jesus of Nazareth, Yeshua, the Nazareth, the son of Yosef, the son of Joseph. And Natanel said to him, Can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? Philippe O said to him, Come and see. Philip said, Philip said to the, it seemed like he was a little doubting, wondering, could anything good, you know what I mean? Like some people probably said back in the days, could anything good come out of Harlem? Like some people say, maybe even today, can anything good come out of Brooklyn? Or can anything good come out of Trenchtown? Can anything good come out of, you know, whatever, whatever kind of ghetto, whatever kind of ghetto we were in or are in, they figured nothing good, you know what I'm saying? can come.